Hi, I hope you all have had a great summer. I for sure have. Anyways, I'm now back and ready to make more videos. It seems that Route 53 and SSL certificates are a hot topic. I have gotten a lot of questions regarding enabling HTTPS on your applications. This is a video of an example of how to do that with a static web application hosted on Amazon S3 and using a custom domain. So to do this, we are also going to learn about CloudFront. I'll show you how to create a CloudFront distribution. The CloudFront origin will be the S3 bucket, meaning the S3 bucket will contain some static content for our web page, and the CloudFront distribution will function as an access point to the S3 bucket. More on this later. This will also let us create a connection to the S3 bucket that should be secure using HTTPS with an SSL certificate. So this is all technical details, but in a broader sense, what does this mean? First, let me explain what CloudFront is and what it does. It is a content delivery network or CDN service. It speeds up the delivery of static and dynamic content such as HTML, CSS, images, etc. to your users. Think of it as a global cache. CloudFront makes sure that your users always have the lowest latency possible by storing the content as close to the end user as possible using something called edge locations. To learn more about this, visit the link in the description below. CloudFront also has a lot of other powerful features, such as enabling HTTPS using SSL certificates created or imported using AWS Certificate Manager. It also includes real-time metrics and logging, edge computing using Lambda at Edge, which, by the way, is a really cool feature. And you can also apply custom domains. So how does CloudFront fit in with S3? You may already know that you can use just S3 to host a static web page without the need for CloudFront. Well, you see, by only using S3 static hosting, you can't enable HTTPS or, in other words, a secure connection to the S3 bucket. For this, we need CloudFront. Also, using CloudFront, the static content of your S3 bucket will be cached in all AWS Edge locations around the world, meaning not all requests have to travel all the way to your S3 bucket to retrieve the static content, which can be located in a completely other region than the end user. Instead, it can automatically be delivered from the edge location closest to them, with the lowest possible latency. As you can see, combining CloudFront and S3 can give you some real benefits. It's also worth noting that CloudFront can be combined with many other origins than S3. For example, an elastic load balancer or any other HTTP server running on AWS EC2 or any other kind of host. I may not have explained what an origin is. An origin is the location where the original content is stored, in our case S3, and is where CloudFront gets the content to cache in the edge locations which is then served to the end user. Now, back to today's task. I'll start by creating the S3 bucket, where we'll store some HTML and a picture. Go over to S3, click Create Bucket. Keep in mind the name has to be globally unique, or else you'll get an error. I'll call mine Endres CloudFront test, and let the region be EU Central 1, since that's the region I usually use for these demos. 
everything else I'll let be as default. This also means that I will leave block all public access on. This may seem strange since I want people to be able to access the HTML and picture in this bucket. But I'll soon explain why and show you how CloudFront is linked to this. Now scroll down and hit create bucket. Let's upload an HTML file and a picture. Open the bucket and hit upload. Now drop in the files you want to upload. The HTML file has an image tag with a local reference to the picture. So the picture should show up if we open or render the HTML. Before we continue, if you like my videos and want to learn more about serverless and AWS, remember to subscribe to my channel and smash that bell icon so you don't miss any new videos. Now that a bucket is created and files uploaded, we can create our CloudFront distribution. Go over to CloudFront and click Create Distribution. The first thing we need to configure is the origin or what CloudFront should point to. From here, I'll choose my S3 bucket as the origin domain. If you want to request a specific path, you could do that here, but since my content is located in the root path of the S3 bucket, I'll leave it blank. You could also change the name, but I'll leave it as default. Next, you may remember that we left the permission settings in the S3 bucket to block all access. Well, this is where the CloudFront Origin Access Identity or OAI comes in. This feature lets us enable public access to files inside the S3 bucket, but only by accessing them through the CloudFront distribution. So a reason for doing this is to, for example, ensure that files are only accessed securely by using HTTPS, which is something we can enforce by using a CloudFront distribution with an SSL certificate. At the same time, you know that all requests are routed through CloudFront, which gives you more control over how the files can be accessed, and you also get metrics and logging, etc. So just hit yes, use OAI. We now need to add an OAI or create a new one. Also, for simplicity, hit yes on updating the bucket policy. This way, we don't need to go back through the S3 bucket and manually add permission for CloudFront to access the bucket content. For an additional caching layer, you can enable Origin Shield. This reduces the load on your origin, in this case S3, by increasing the cache heat ratio and it can give you better network performance by using an origin shield in the region closest to or with the lowest latency to the origin. This does come with additional cost though. For this demo, I'll leave it off. For default cache behavior, choose what's best for your application, but I'll recommend enabling redirect HTTP to HTTPS or only allowing HTTPS. I'll let everything else regarding cache behavior be as default. Next, you could add function associations for Lambda at Edge functions. This is very useful if you, for example, want to manipulate the request before hitting the origin or the response before it returns to the client or end user. OK, scroll down to the settings section. I want to use all edge locations. This means that I will utilize all available edge locations 
provided by AWS. It will make sure that the content in my bucket is cached all over the world and make sure that my users have the lowest possible latency. If you know that all or almost all your users are located close to a single region, then you could limit the edge locations to only a select few. Next, I want to make use of my own custom domain to access my S3 bucket through this CloudFront distribution. To do that, enable alternative domain name. In here, add your domain. In my case, this is a subdomain. For this to work, we need an SSL certificate associated with that domain or subdomain in my case. The SSL certificate has to be created or imported using AWS Certificate Manager. To learn how to create a domain using Route 33 and hosted zones, as well as how to register a certificate to go along with it, watch my video linked above. I'll also have a link in the description. I'll assume that you have already created a Route 53 hosted zone and an SSL certificate. So if you haven't, go ahead and watch that video. One important thing to remember here is that the certificate created in ACM or AWS Certificate Manager has to be created in the US East 1 region. If not, then you can't use it with any CloudFront distribution. This is just a limitation with CloudFront and I'm not going to go into the details as for why that is, but it has something to do with the fact that CloudFront is a global service. Now, I have already created a certificate, hence I can choose that certificate here. Next, we can add a default root object. This way, people visiting your application using your URL don't have to specify a file to access. This is nice if, for example, you are hosting a website using static HTML files, like we are going to do now, then you can use an index.html file as the root object. This file will then be loaded when people visit your application with your domain. Since my HTML file is called helloworld.html, then I'm going to use that as the root object. For all the other stuff, I'll just let it be as default. But there are many other settings you can fine tune to your needs. Lastly, scroll down and hit create. Now, it will take some time before the deployment is complete. Just a few minutes later, if we look at our distributions, we should see that the status says enabled. The next step is to create a new record in our Route 53 hosted zone. You see, for the alternative domain setting to work, we need to create a new A record in our hosted zone that points to the CloudFront distribution. Go over to Route 53, open your hosted zone, and hit Create Record. Since this is a subdomain, I'll enter that here. Again, choose A record as type. I'll use an alias to easily point the traffic to CloudFront, and then use our CloudFront distribution as the destination. I'll also let the default setting of simple routing be as is. Then hit create. If we copy the URL, open a new window and try to access our domain, we should get the HTML in return and the browser should render it and show my picture. And yes, it did. This means that we now have a functioning website that doesn't do that much yet, of course, but it works. And 
The important part is that the connection is secure using HTTPS and thanks to CloudFront or the CDN, we can expect blazing fast loading times for all users across the world. All that's left to say now is until next time, happy coding.